Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're gonna look at octane lights, and I'll show you how to make a projector, a spotlight, and window lighting, as well as some other handy tips. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D. Let's have a look what we've got in our scene. So you can see we've got an octane camera here, and in our scene null, we've just got the statue geometry and the room geometry. There's a link to the project file below. You can download that and follow along if you like. There's also a link to this free statue model down below, but you can use whatever model you want. Right, let's fire up Octane and get this started. So under Octane, we'll click on the Live Viewer window. It's popped up way too big, so let's shrink that down. And we'll move it over here. If you grab this little dotted section in the corner here, you can drag and reposition this panel. I like to work with it like this. If we just move that like so. And this one about there. Okay, we're all set. Let's come up here and fire this up. Right, so we've got our first issue here. We've got lights in our scene, but if we look over here, there aren't any lights. So what's going on? If we click this button and go into our Octane settings, then we'll go over to the settings tab and under ENV for environment, you can see this is the environment color and that's lighting our scene. At the moment, it's set to this gray. Let's bring that back down to black. We always want to be lighting from black and building up our lights on top of that. Okay, let's close this guy. Now, if you've been using Octane for a while, you've probably noticed this little issue. If we come over here and disable our Octane camera and go back into the perspective view, we can see our scene a bit easier, but you'll notice that some of the textures have come up black. Sometimes the Cinema 4D viewport doesn't work so well with Octane materials. You can see it likes the material we have on the statue and on the wall trim there, but it doesn't like the wall or the floor material. And you can see if I come down here and grab one of the materials it doesn't like, we'll grab the wall and we'll drop that onto the statue. It also goes black. And if all your objects in the scene are black, it's gonna be a bit of a pain to navigate. But lucky for you, I know a little trick. Let's undo that so our statue has the right material again. And if we come up here and grab all the geometry in our scene that has octane materials on them and come down here under the basic tab, where it says use color, let's turn that on. And instantly, it's so much easier to see what's going on in our scene. And if that white's a bit too bright for you, you can click on here and bring that down to a nice soft gray. And there we go. Now we're ready to do some lighting. Let's come up here under the objects tab and grab our first octane area light. And you can see that's updated nicely in our viewport. Let's see how it looks in octane. We'll hit this button for the preview and looking good. Maybe a bit bright. Let's move this up into position. Definitely a bit bright. The good thing about the lights in Octane is that they act just like they do in real life. So if we go and click on our light and under details, if we bring the outer radius down, which will shrink our light, you'll see that it's a lot less bright, just like in real life. Right, so the first light we're gonna try and create is a spotlight. And this is not quite as simple as you think it might be. You might think if we change the area shape to disc, that might work, but you can see it didn't do anything. And playing around with the radius isn't changing much other than the brightness. What we wanna do instead is go into the Octane Light Tag properties. You can find that here or up here, the tag is next to your light. So the first thing you wanna do is come down to the distribution and we'll click this little arrow and under C4D Octane, we'll grab an image texture. Then we need to click into that and we need to bring in an external image. I've got one prepared off screen here. I'll just drag that in and it looks just like that. Not much to it, just a white circle on a black background. Our scene definitely got brighter, but it still doesn't look much like a spotlight. But if we come down to projection and then change our mesh UV to perspective, we're getting a lot closer. It's a little bit crazy. It looks like we've got a lot of spotlights going on here. So to quickly fix that, let's come down here to border mode and we'll change that to black color. That way, instead of repeating our texture, everything outside becomes black. And we now have a spotlight, although it's a little bit soft. Let's sharpen it up. If we click this arrow and go back a level and start messing around with the power, you'll see that that changes the brightness, but our edges are still a bit blurry. However, if we scale our light, it gets darker, but our edges get sharper. So all we need to do to compensate is bring that power back up again. And there we go. We could even make it a bit sharper. Let's click in here and we'll bring our radius right down. 
those edges are looking good. And again, we'll bump that power up. Nice. Let's go back up here and look through our camera. And we can actually see the backside of our light here. We don't want that guy visible. So if we come down to the visibility tab and we'll just turn off camera visibility. Okay, our spotlight is looking a little bit blue. If you wanted it to look more like a theater spotlight, you could just come down to light settings and change the temperature. If we bring it this way, we'll get a bit more orange into it. Right, that should do it. So now I'm gonna show you how to be a bit more creative with this technique. We're gonna turn our spotlight into a window. So camera off and back to our perspective view. We wanna come back down to our image texture and we're just gonna switch this out with something that looks a bit more like a window. We'll click here and over here I've got a different image. I'll just drag that over here and you can see instant window. Again, the texture is pretty simple. There's just six little squares here in the shape of a window. Let's pull it back to make it a bit bigger. And we'll go back to our camera view. That looks cool, but we can make it a little bit more dramatic by putting this on a tilt. So let's go up to our rotate tool and we'll just play around with that a little bit until we get something we like. So that's cool if there's like a street light outside lighting our scene. But usually through the window at night, you're gonna get moonlight. So let's make this light a little bit more blue. We'll come back to our light settings and we'll just bring our temperature back this way to bring back some of that blue. I'm really liking how that's looking, but you could take it to the next level and bring in some more detail to make the scene just a little bit more interesting. If we go back into our image texture, I've got another little image here that we can plonk in. It's basically the same as our window, only I've added some tree branches in there. And I think that's really helping us tell a story in this image. You've always got to be thinking of little details that you can add to your artwork to really make it stand out. And of course we can scale this up to make it a bit more blurry and move it around however we like to get a more interesting composition. Something like that should do us. Cool. You could also add a bit of ambient light to fill in these black spaces. We'll just go objects and bring in a texture environment. That's kind of cool in itself, but we want to dial that down a little bit. So we'll grab our environment tag and bring the power down to something like that. Okay, so what if you wanted our light to be more like a movie projector? Well, I'm gonna show you. Let's jump over to After Effects. I've got some nice old stock footage here of some planes flying along. We've got a nice bit of grain in there. It's looking very cinematic. Of course, you can use any footage you like. All I did in my example to make it look more like a projector was come down here, press Control Y to make a new solid. We'll make sure it's black and we'll fit it to comp size. Hit OK. Then we'll come up here and grab our rounded rectangle tool. We'll just drag that shape out here. You can hit spacebar to move this around if you've got it in the wrong spot. Get something like that. We can hit M on the keyboard twice really fast to bring up our mask settings. We'll just give that a bit of feathering. Maybe 22 pixels is good and invert the mask. And now we have those old time projector sort of edges. Now, before we render this out, we wanna make sure that our comp length and frame rate is the same as our Cinema 4D project. Then we'll hit Control M to bring up our render settings. We wanna make sure the output module is set to some sort of sequence. We're gonna go with JPEG sequence here. And you can click in the options here and change your compression if you like. I think eight for quality is fine for now. So it's gonna render out your comp with little underscore and then the frame numbers after that. Let's hit render and I'll meet you back in Cinema 4D. Okay, now it's just a matter of replacing our old texture with the new image sequence. So let's go back to our Octane light tag and back down in our image texture. Here's the guy we need to replace. I'll just go off here and grab the first frame from the image sequence that was output from After Effects and drag that in. And you can see that update up here. Let's switch our camera off so we can get a better look at this. It's all lopsided at the moment. So let's go back into our light and in the coordinates, we wanna zero all these out. So we're pointed straight to the wall again. Let's move our projection a bit closer. And we want this to look like it's in a cinema so we can get rid of that ambient light. Let's just turn our octane sky off by holding Alt and double clicking these stoplights. Now we can see that projection a bit better and it's definitely the wrong shape and it looks like it's upside down. But let's start by focusing the image a bit better. Back over in our light, we'll come back to our details and bring our outer radius down to one centimeter. I'm just gonna make the light very small, but very sharp. And again, to compensate, we'll switch over to the light tag and bring that power right up to 50,000. 
Okay, now we're back in focus. Let's have a look through our camera again. We need to flip our image in the Y axis. So we'll come back down here to our image texture and scroll to the bottom. You'll see some of these transform tools underneath our perspective menu. And if we look down here, you'll see S stands for scale. And here's our Y axis. Let's put a negative in here so it flips vertically. And now that's looking right. We just need to stretch it out. So in the X axis, let's change our scale to 1.6 and that's looking much better. But if we come down and hit play, our projection isn't animating. Our sequence is still being treated as a single image, but if we come down here to the animation tab and make sure our timing is set to exact frame, we'll just type in the last frame, which in our case is 192, and we're working at 24 frames a second. We'll come down here and rewind and hit play. And it's looking beautiful. The projection is looking pretty cool being cast over the model like that. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'm sure you can think of loads of creative ways to use these techniques. Don't forget to download that project file below. And you can also get a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. <laughs> And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.